today's Malachi chapter 3. <laughs> yeah. So, really what's on my heart today to share is uh, the Lord purifying His temple and going for holiness based intimacy. That's what I really have in my heart today, and particularly around the temple of the Lord. So, Pastor Cheryl's already preached in the sermon, I'll just <laughs> give some footnotes. <clears throat> That's good. Um, oh, yeah. There's a bit of an intensity coming on today. It's awesome. This is Craig. <clears throat> Father, we uh, just come before you, Lord. And, uh, Lord Jesus, we just praise you and honor you. Just again, Lord, just recognize your awesomeness, your sovereignty. That you are holy, Lord Jesus. You are God, you are precious and all powerful. Lord, you are the only source of life. Father God, given through His Son, and we just come, Lord, and humble hearts, and Lord, I'm more than anyone else say, Lord, we don't know really what we're doing, I don't know really what we're doing, but Lord, we look to You, Father, You are the only hope, Lord, as others have already prayed today, there is no life anywhere else except in You, Lord, and so we come as hungry children, Jesus, to ask for a breath from You today, Lord, Your own presence, Your own self, into our spirit today, Lord, and we receive of You into our hearts and know that we're walking with you towards you, Lord. Help us in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so that was the, um, the text from Pastor Cheryl during the week, just asking if um, bring a message in. And it's like literally a few seconds later, <laughs> she just felt in my heart, this is what you need to share. Um, holy grace, holiness based intimacy with the Lord, God preparing his temple. And I don't have screeds and screeds, I believe it's more just something that the Lord is doing in our midst at the moment, rather than trying to bring a big teaching with something. It's just to affirm, I believe, the conviction that's in my own heart at the moment, and I believe the Lord is, um, is speaking to us as a group here, a body. And honestly, I believe uh, it's not a new subject or theme, but I believe it's something that the Lord is going to continually more and more back, bring back again and again and again. And repeat this issue and um, and it's like a, it's not like an information thing that I heard that about it but it's because it's every time it's a deeper 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 about the Lord taking us deeper to him and him into us um, and it's funny I was just um, so to spend some time with the Lord and you know everything is the information is told many times out his presence comes yeah. and no matter if you heard it many times if it's the Lord Jesus himself it's do anything else. It's just, when he says it, he doesn't need to say it, he doesn't need to read it, he can be it, be the reality of who he is, the bread of life, the Lord God himself. So, um, just to share a few thoughts, and um, I think you all came in first, by the way, when Pastor Cheryl said, has anyone got something fresh in the Lord, you know, in your house from this book, or let's give me a scripture? I'm pretty sure every single one of you has, and you just do uh, buck, buck chicken to get up or something, I don't know what it is, but... Look at this guy, I know he's already told me a couple of like every week he's just bringing up revelations. I'm thinking, unless you're not doing your job, you need to just, just push him out of the chair or something. <laughs> Maybe vice versa. Um, so I'll just start with something that I actually read from, I just want to go to a verse that we're all very familiar with in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. The Lord says that he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be filled. Will be satisfied. He hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Will be satisfied. And, uh, and so he, later on in that same sermon on the mount, um, Lord Jesus, he's talking about you know, don't, don't worry about the um, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, and all that kind of stuff. Very much on my mind today. I'm praying because I just got back done this this week. Uh, I did that four weeks the other week, which is which is awesome. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> Then there comes the part of, oh yeah, it's what I do next. <laughs> and the reality of Lord, I, I come back to this, this fundamental issue that I take my thoughts and my trust in Him, see first His kingdom. And He doesn't, he doesn't just say righteousness, He says His righteousness. So that, that's a massive big load of how, don't go seeking your righteousness or just trying to be righteous in yourself. His righteousness is a massive difference to what God calls righteous. It's very, very difficult to make. Man calls righteousness. What God calls righteousness is the Son Jesus. 
in the Holy Spirit. That is the righteousness of God. So see, his righteousness. Um, it's another preacher in the house. It's, yeah, it's a competition. Um, so simple as a cell, I believe. The focus that the, that I believe um, was bringing that Pastor Cheryl was preaching on at school, at school with the issue of truth versus deception. This is one of the ways that the Lord creates our hunger is to challenge us with something that's utterly not ourselves, which is absolute pure truth. And when we're confronted with that, when we're confronted with the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, we immediately know in our hearts that there is a confrontation, and it's not something that hopefully that we run from, but it's a challenge because it's it's, it's God. It's something utterly other than what we are. We're born again. We have a measure of it, but every time he comes in greater intensity. That is a challenge in itself. And so when truth comes, we have a choice to run, get up, get up our minds and run the wrong way, or to accept it and say, and that, that in itself, um, by the very act of God doing that creates, should create a hunger, should create a need, should create a desperation in us. God, I need you because um, just seeing the light of who you are and you're carrying your truth the purity of word is an immediate challenge to me and brings it brings it quiet. I want more of you. Yeah. So interesting, I don't know if anyone's read the um, the newsletter that Alejandro just read, uh, sent out recently. Uh,
a lot, a lot saying no before. Boy, you've got to guess to open their mouth in this next year or this next um, next decade. Make sure that we are grounded in absolute truth, discerning about the seed. What is deception? And I is obviously also talk about revelation. So what is the revelation that we're getting that we're going to open the mouth this year? And then and next year. So just an interesting. So again, this focus on spirit of truth and the Lord um, challenging us on the inside to discern what is truth, what is not, and being able to speak out that which is from God. And, what's, and, and uh, also the mouth is uh, also obviously challenging what is not true. Amen. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do this by I'm going to share something really fun. It's on YouTube. It's Pastor Billy Graham's son. It's really short. But I heard this, 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 this he was being interviewed by a couple of news readers and um, yeah, news commentators. And his response was just so clear, so succinct, so at rest. And I just want to thought, I want that exposure, I want that clarity, that straightness to be able to speak through no matter what. And I just want to just want to play this bit of what I was just sharing earlier. Um, God give me the guts to be able to confront like he does. Not without not sounding weird, but just coming the truth, the scripture. I'm just gonna play this. There are a couple of um, news commentators and they're asking about the, the gay agenda. So somewhere in America they want to take off this tax exempt status from Christian ministries, including Billy Graham Foundation. So this is what it's
again, this uh, issue of problem today is just the simplicity of first love. Forever being challenged to keep this, this focus, the first love of the Lord, no matter what it is, uh, intimacy with Him, God, just relationship, just um, fellowship with Him, more than anything else. Um, you know, even the warfare and even life, just um, nat natural issues and practical issues of life, family members, hospital, the bills to pay, the relationships, relations, relations that way of things, um, getting back to another, all that sort of stuff. And to me, it was such a battle the last couple of days, just trying to prepare, because all my mind wants to go to was the problems at work, because there's problems, problems, problems. Um, just a reminder of me, Matthew 7, uh, that we're talking about, what is verse 24 to 27. <clears throat> Again, the winds and the waves, and you know, the, the parable about the wise man building his house upon the rock, and the foolish man building his house on the sand. So it was the wise man, just like the um, foolish man, who also has had the winds beating and the floods coming and, the, and all the problems coming, the storms are bashing against this house. And um, it's times where we start to become accustomed to the thought that. I'm in the center of the world, the center of the world of God, there's going to be no problems, there's going to be no, no issues bashing against the walls and the roof and the house. But there is, and, and so just the,
having missed when God has come and given you the table. When the Lord, the Holy Spirit, has come in conviction and knocked on our heart and spoken to us and from His presence and given us a taste of what He's calling us into and didn't follow through, missed it. You know? That's a, that's a, honestly, that's a fear from my heart. In my life is a, a terrible thing. I'm praying for that. I believe it's the Lord wanting me to stay. You know, believe it for three and a half decades, 36 years. <laughs> Older than you. And um, you find when you pray that things just come out of your heart and everything else from the Lord. It's not something that isn't thought of, it just comes out. And, and you, it says in, in Romans 8, the Holy Spirit helps us in our families. We don't even know what to pray for as we walk. So the Holy Spirit says, look, this is the stuff that you need to ask the Father right now. And um, just going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Share this verse over and over in the last few weeks. And it's interesting for me personally, and, and sorry if you don't get anything out of this, but hopefully you may get something. So just transitioning for me out of this job, I absolutely believe it's all this time to get out of where I'm at. Process, but it's pretty ugly at the moment because I'm maybe having made a great big blunder at that work. So I thank God for the spirit of truth and just be very open about that and, and uh, deal with the pain and the, and the uh, rebukes that are going to come pretty thick and fast very soon. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, it's it's a transition period and it's like, uh, for me personally, it's like the grace of God just getting me into the fresh, the fresh color. <laughs> You to just absolutely narrow them on the perfect will for your life. And do be so careful just to follow what I'm saying. Just be careful, take time out, wait on me. And be sensitive to hear the voice of God who is perfect will. Time's running out, old fellow, is he? That would be the amplified classic vision. <laughs> John Russell, you're getting old, time's running out, get real, you know? <laughs> 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 That's 4th John chapter 2. Um, but look, it's a healthy, it's a healthy fear to have a sense of eternity and not just if I'm going to heaven or hell, but still going to heaven and yet missing God's ultimate. And when he calls for intimacy, it's, it's, uh, it is, um, I believe it's absolutely holiness based. Obedience based intimacy is a, is a requiring of the Lord. It's not just about having his, his closeness come and compassion to heal us, which is amazing and precious, and we can't get saved without that. But when he comes because he wants intimacy with somebody that he can relate to, he wants somebody of the same spirit. So he himself will bring the very issues to us to bring that same compatibility of spirit and nature of him, right? So God wants intimacy, but He wants somebody that He's actually attracted to. But he loves because He is God. He's, he loves because He is love. But intimate fellowship for God is going to come with a bride that He, he gets, that He is of the same nature. And so, and so this the holiness, the obedience, the righteousness of God, that is a challenge as He just draws near. And as, as the invitation comes to this, this wedding, not just as a guest, but as the bride herself. <clears throat> and we can, and I agree with what Franklin Graham just said there, on that issue of the LGBT and every other, many other things, that many, many Christians will pull back. We want about that scripture. And, that's a, and we ourselves can. We can say, no, no, we're going, we're going hard out. We listen to Terry Bennett. We're, we're full on. <laughs> really? We can miss it just like everybody else. Pull back in our own. But honestly, it's really it's only in the quietness of our own heart with the Lord. Um, and it's just Him and us, and absolute honesty, where we know whether whether or not we are fully laid down for the Lord or not. If there's actually something that He's put His finger, his finger on, that we are holding back, that we are, we do every other external religious thing, and yet hold hold out on one one issue. And so that's what I feel like. At the moment, um, 
what I believe is like just a beautiful opportunity for me getting made redundant. This is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to start. And I'm praying, God, help me to fulfill every part of the world. Please give me the, the strength, the wisdom, the grace. I want to know it and the courage, no matter what the cost. If it's the most menial job, I'll do it. I was, I was at Woolworths yesterday and um, checking out. And, uh, and I saw there were some wonderful people working in the, in the files. And I said to the young lady at the young camera sit down, uh, so how do those people get jobs? Those, those um, what do you call it, um, night photos. And she says, oh, it's just such and such as a manager. I can call it down if you're looking. I said, no, I'll just do it. Just <laughs> but just the pride in me, you know, coming come from an accounting background, CPA and all this sort of stuff, and you ask me about something really many of like stacking shelves. Oh my gosh, it's just. It was just ugly how much pride there was. Just to even ask the question, I didn't ask for a job, just, just to ask the question about going to Nightfall. And I thought, wow, that was interesting. <laughs> was it worthwhile trip to Woolworths to see how much pride is still in me? <laughs> awesome. That was free, she didn't charge me for that. I don't know. But one of them, I mean, look, I'm, I'm honestly I'm happy to do that. I don't know what I'll be doing, but, um, but the issue of, of the Lord, the Lord Himself, looking for looking for a people, looking for a person, looking for you and I, looking for someone who you really can be intimate with, with the, you know, as, as we heard with Abraham and Moses, these people who walked with God, and just raising that invitation as this is actually the same to us, to Melbourne tonight, to Bali, to Terry, exactly the same invitation to be as close and intimate and as holy and dealt with by the Lord as, as we want. That is phenomenal. And it doesn't mean to say that we might get a, an, an international platform to preach. It's nothing to do with that. It's just in the will of God according to His purpose for us, which may look like to stink to somebody else and even other Christians like, oh, man, look at that guys. Nobody but. And that's part of the cross, I believe, is to let, it's just to Happily being misunderstood by your own brothers and sisters at times. So, you know, that from sin, just staying in your lane, staying in track, but avoid the spirit of truth, obedience, obedience, genuine obedience to his will. So, sorry, the first one can be sweet. Can read that now? <laughs> um, from, I'll start at chapter, so verse 10, because it's so amazing. According to the grace of God, also Paul was saying, given to me like a school master builder, I laid the foundation and someone else building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. So this is the issue again for obedience, like not missing the word of God, being careful, having that, um, that awesome fear of possibly missing the word of God is his absolute best. Set yourselves up for eternity in a place of fulfilling, having known to fulfill eternal purposes of God in this life. Wow. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, or precious stones, or wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest. It will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. Same as Malachi chapter 3 what we just read. It will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will re receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, but only as though through fire. <coughs> so, um, Again, I just encourage everyone just to be guarded, just be aware that the enemy, one thing the enemy wants to take away is that the intimate time, the quiet time, the time just waiting, bringing ourselves every day before the Lord, because that's the only way that we're going to get to a place where our heart is sensitive to enough to align with and hear and understand the will and purposes of God and run with it. Because the distractions will come, life's issues will come, and even that's, that's well, all of us are the devil. Allow us stuff to come, right? So, they you know, get the luxury of most times they have just a six weeks or to take a whole year off and then see the Lord. I didn't know distractions. <laughs> just, 
doesn't seem to happen. Although no job, I might be able to get that opportunity. <laughs> So any, anyway, uh, let's go to Psalm 139, just a couple more verses before I finish. So I said, um, I said last time I spoke, I reminded us that a, a couple of, a, like a short series that Pastor Chris did on, on being known by God, right? And he, he was a verse in Galatians, yes. that, uh, it's Galatians Chapter 4, verse 9, but now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God. And I just um, I just mentioned it again because I thought it's, it's, a, it's such an important and amazing issue. To know God is essential. It's, it's what Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, that this is eternal life, that they may know you in Jesus Christ and your sin. That they may know you the true God in Jesus Christ and said that's that's important. That's, that's, that was Paul's prayer in Philippians, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his, of his sufferings. And the, I count everything but, but done compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing God. So and knowing the Lord is amazing, but having God know us, that is also seriously important. And it's exactly what, what Jesus warned in Matthew 7. Many was not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, go into the kingdom of God. Those who do against obedience, those who do the will of my Father. And this is the you know, Pharisee women standing around, and you all ticked every single box, there's the do, and yet none of them appears to be doing the will of God. So this issue of obedience, and I shared this, this uh, revelation before, I'm just going to say it again because, because I know. You had any chance before and you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, so this, this amazing thought, now that you've come to know God, or rather be known by God, and uh, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1 to 3, Paul saying there, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. So there's a, there's a connection that God is aware of. Every, every soul on earth actually has a genuine love. No matter if it's just a small seed, and it does, it's, it's how it starts for all of us. A seed form of the love of God in our hearts. God Himself. It's a gift from God. Love for God is a gift from God. It's God Himself. And it starts in seed form, right? And there's there's soul and there's flesh and there's past and there's history that that rages against that. And it's up to us to nurture that seed of the, the love of God, the, the love of truth, the, the love of holiness that comes in seed form in our heart. Um, Anyway, Psalm 139. So this entire psalm, King David is saying, Lord, you have, you have searched me and know me. When I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar off. You search out my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hear me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I send to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. And he goes on, and he goes on. And so, uh, in verse 12, he says, Even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as day, the darkness is as light to you. Before my inner parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. And so he goes on and on, this, this recurring thing that, Lord, you know everything. And then right to the end it gets, it says, in verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. It's the point of that request. You just spent the entire psalm saying, Lord, you know me, you know everything about me, you know when I wake up, when I just go to sleep, you know my thoughts, you know everything I'm going to say, where you're going to say it. And then you say, Search me, O God, and try my thoughts. And this is, I believe, the difference between um, having God know us. So the, the degree that he knows us is only, and this is more the only, uh, it's, it's to the extent that we let the spirit of truth come in. He can know us from the outside again, which is what sort the of revelation is sort of blurring not from the outside. And at that moment he was saying, I still don't know you, I'm, I know all about you because I'm God. And he does, he knows everything about 
everything about us as he is God. But he's still saying, I know you, until the spirit of truth comes in, until he's acknowledging of, our, of sorry, receiving of the spirit of truth, receiving the spirit of light, holding his conviction, repentance, that's the number, that's when he says, I know you, because you've I spoke to you and you acknowledged, you said, yeah, that's absolutely right. Come in, Jesus, come in truth, come in holiness, come in righteousness, come in purity, come in forgiveness. What was that song? All that's in heaven. Um, how does it go? Everything in heaven, I want it, I want it. Bring it down, I can't remember. I want it all. I think there's a few verses missing. All the rebukes, all the correction, all the trust, <laughs> all the difficulty, all the tribulation. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, there's a few verses missing here in this song, you know, but... I want it all. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's just a death that's not the But that's the reality, is it? That when he comes in that conviction, that is when he knows us. When we say yes, Jesus, to truth. Yes, to conviction. Yes, to fire. Yes, to searing, burning, difficult, you know, uh, disruptive truth that comes in. And we say yes, Amen, I agree, Jesus, you are absolutely right. Please fill me, come in. I want that spirit of truth. I want the spirit of light. I want truth. Um, something Lisa prayed on, on Friday night. God, you are the plumb line. And that is it. The Lord Jesus Christ, God himself, the entire creation, God is the plumb line. He is the only truth. And until we allow that, that revelation into, deep into our spirit, the only truth is God Himself. Everything else, including my own thoughts. So, for it Romans somewhere, let God be true and every man be a liar. God Himself, everything that is in contrary to God Himself, His Word, is a liar. Yes. And until we let that in, and letting that in, that's when God says, I know Him. Because I came to Him when He was an error, when He was in darkness and despair, and came as the Spirit of Truth. And He said, Yes, I agree, I want you. In my spirit, I want to be one in spirit with you. And that's when he says, I know. And I believe that's where it talks in the Bible about the Lord of angels putting a mark on the forehead of his people. I believe that is when the mark is put on our forehead. And he comes in that, in that way. Um, you know, just the same as that salvation, but it's, it doesn't stop there. It comes in more and greater and greater intensity and deeper depths of conviction and truth and holiness and righteousness and light and purity and wisdom and embarrassing, pride-smashing uh, truth. And at any point we can say, oh, that's too uncomfortable. I think so. We can say, yes, I agree with the Spirit of Jesus. I agree with the Spirit of Truth. And I ask him to come around. And that's where he can put his arm around me and talk, turn to the angels and say, I know him. I know this one. I know him. That is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, something else I was going to say, but so, um, I was pray and ask the Lord to continue doing that work in us. Um, so again, it's, you know, it says in Revelations chapter 4, I think the King James is the only version that uses this particular verse, phrasing, but it says, uh, I'll turn there actually. There's another scripture in Psalm, Psalm when I uh, first became a believer, and I used to sing the King James version scripture. And, what I call the scripture in Psalm. I think. Let's just go from chapter 4 from uh, verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the throne and lives forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him who sat on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. 
You have created all things, and for your pleasure they are and were created. I just love that. It just encourages whenever you come to prayer. Um, I know we, you know this is not just about shopping list for the Lord. It's about pursuing Him. But I would encourage you. I've been praying this recently. When you come to the Lord, um, you can say that he, you're created for His pleasure. You just you turning up before Him. Revealing your face and your heart before the Lord. That is the reason that you're created. To present yourself for the Father. Present yourself for intimacy. And yes, we have to be pure and, and holy for His blood to afford that. But He's made the way for that. We can. We can come. We can come boldly. We can deal with the issues in the heart. And confess us for forgiveness. But then just come. It's like, we're praying that. It's just amazing. The Lord, here I am. We come to present myself. You said that everything in all creation was created for your pleasure. So today I just come and I just present myself before the Lord. And I just I tell you how amazing that this sets my heart every time I say that. Prayer is not about me getting all the stuff done. Even about me getting holy so I can go to heaven. It's not the purpose of salvation. The purpose of salvation is that God can bless them. The purpose of Lord Jesus coming and dying for souls is not just for souls. For God, so He can have a deep Even in prayer, you know, just turning the, the whole table around, God, this is all for you. This is that's what it says. All things are created for your pleasure. So that we're not blessed, to be honest. Um, it's just there's a I encourage you, there's an element of freedom and breakthrough in that that comes where okay, well, there's some time focus, even this time of prayer right now, it's for you. So do in me whatever you need to do so that you all are fulfilled, so you are blessed. And, uh, you know. All right, so um, just encourage us to stand. I'm just going to pray and, and ask the Holy Spirit to continue to talk to us through the week and form in us this, this, this holy dwelling place for Him, this temple, so He can take us all deeper into an intimate relationship with Him. And whatever form that, that takes, you know, it's just amazing. You know, invited to a deep, intimate relationship with a living Creator God. Uh, and He wants to give us all a continual overhaul, ongoing continual overhaul. So, precious Lord, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you what you've been sharing through your different ones this afternoon already. Father, in the prayer, in the worship, and in your word, Father God. And we come, Lord, we just. Um, Praise you and bless you, Lord. Just acknowledge first of all, Jesus, that all heaven and earth was created for the Father, for you, Lord, for your glory, for your purpose and pleasure. But Lord Jesus, all things don't revolve, revolve around us. All things don't revolve around our need. But Lord, about you, you created us to be so transformed, Lord, filled with your truth, filled with your purity and light and love, so that we can, Lord, have fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. The fellowship with the Father, we can have fellowship in the Holy Spirit through the blood of the Son, so that you can be glorified. So Father, we pray that, Lord, you would so continue to work deep in us, burn, Lord, your convicting truth into our hearts, burn your, your truth, your love, your mercy, so continue to mold it and uh, saturate our hearts, heal us, Lord, transform us, so that we only have a yes in our heart for you, Father, that every no is taken from us, Lord God, that we have the grace to yield to be honest, to be um, a completely open curtains, open doors, open windows for you to come. Come in, Lord Jesus, and have the fullness of your will and purpose come to pass. We pray that we would be full of light, Father God, full of transparency, full of purity in Jesus' name. We acknowledge that, Lord, this is the work of your hand, Lord, not the work of flesh or man, but only you can do the work, Lord, as we yield, as we say yes, as we agree. As we respond and as we come to you, Lord. So we ask that you continue to do that. Create in us, Lord, here and throughout Australia and in Brisbane. Lord, a holy dwelling place, Lord. I pray that conviction will continue to come. Convict your people, Lord Jesus, we pray. Convict us to be cleansed and purified. That, Lord, as, as those verses in Malachi, Lord, suddenly, Lord, suddenly, Lord, you will come to your temple. You will bring the purifying fire, Lord Jesus. That purifying work, Lord God, and it's not so that you can destroy us, but so that you can transform, destroy the darkness, everything that's not of you, so that you can purify and prepare a people for yourself, Lord. 
clothed in your holiness and righteousness, your purity, Lord, the very fragrance and grace of Jesus Christ in our lives, Lord. We pray this, we pray this for the unsaved also, Lord. I pray, Father, for, Lord, for the boldness that uh, Frank and Graham had in that, that small interview that we saw. Father, I pray that for myself, that same courage and boldness, Lord, not to flinch, but in love to be able to declare the, the truth of the gospel, Lord, for the saving of soul, that, Lord, souls need convicting truth. Soul need a spirit of repentance, Lord, and how can they hear? How can they do that without hearing truth spoken, Father? Give us grace, Lord, not to, to water down or muddy the message, Father God, but to be clear, to be bold and precise, Father God, and to be, Lord, aggressive and love with truth, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray, Lord, continue to work in all our hearts, and may we continue to be sensitive to walk with you, Father, no matter what the situation, our practical issues in life, Father, we pray and just give all these things to you. We praise you and bless you, we exalt you and thank you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. If anyone else has a prayer,